Hello gamers, it's nice, and I hope you glorious NPCs are having a nice day. Today, we will be discussing MMO Ashes of Creation and its combat. This will be a very detailed breakdown of everything we know so far, and will serve as a guide on everything from core combat mechanics like blocking and dodging, all the way up to the more common questions like, is the game action combat or is it tab target? We'll update this information upon Alpha 2's release and or as we get more information, so make sure you're subscribed to stay up to date. I plan on doing a more in-depth combat guide once we get our hands on Alpha 2. Before we begin, Again, I'd like to preface this that we are still pre-alpha 2 so a lot of this information is subject to change as the game is still a work in progress. I'll occasionally have video clips from previous intrepid streams to better explain certain aspects of combat especially when I feel it's the best way to convey that message. I'd also like to say that throughout this video a lot of similarities or rather comparisons will be made to other MMOs to better convey a point or to better give you a sense of what to expect. This doesn't mean the two MMOs are exactly you know specific or one-to-one -one comparisons, but this will definitely give us an idea. A large majority of this video was gathered primarily via rewatching so many previous live streams over the course of the past two weeks, the Ashes of Creation Wiki, and the Ashes of Creation's forums where I found gems like this. Most gameplay examples I use in the video will be on MMORPGs I have the most experienced in, like The Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 2, and New World. But there are plenty of MMORPG comparisons that I found through my research that I could be making comparisons with but I didn't feel comfortable presenting them like that here as I haven't played those myself. Any comparison to said MMOs are not putting them on the same level as Ashes, but only to be used as relevancy. I think when we try to compare AOC's combat to a current MMO, Guild Wars 2 is the closest one, so I'll probably be using that one the most, but more on that later. Also, remember that Ashes of Creation is a PVX game, so all combat decisions are taken with that in mind. There will be a lot of chapters separate in certain combat categories if you'd like to jump ahead or revisit something. Also, if there's something that I forgot to include or something is wrong, I'll be sure to include that in the pinned comment where you can also find a link to join us on Discord. Now that I've read that incredibly long disclaimer that my Vec lawyer made me read, I'd like to thank all my YouTube channel members for the continued support and everyone who took the time to subscribe to the channel. Also, everyone who took the time to like the video as this was weeks in the making. Thank you so much for subscribing. Now let's begin. <laughs> Now, let's start off with what I will refer to as core combat mechanics. Something that I feel isn't incorporated with core combat mechanics is things like jumping and climbing, which are indeed available to the player to traverse the land. When I say core combat mechanics, I'm referring to sprint, dodge roll, and blocking. Ashes of Creation will have sprinting, though last we were told you were not permitted to sprint while in combat. From what I rewatched, there really hasn't been any sprinting shown in our most recent live streams. I want to say during the Cyclops boss fight, you know that part where the second group approach, they may have been sprinting, but that kind of looked pretty close to that normal W speed or forward movement that we see the characters do, so I could be wrong, you guys let me know. Speaking of movement, Ashes will follow the traditional style of walking backwards or backpedaling is obviously going to be slower than going forward, which I think this is a video game essential, a video game tradition if you will. I don't think a game necessarily needs a sprint mechanic, but it feels good. Upon playing Guild Wars 2 and New World where you rely on your movement speed bonuses rather than sprinting, I will say that I really do like that style personally. Now let's move on to dodge roll. It appears Ashes of Creation is doing something a little different with their dodge roll. Dodge roll will not have iframes. This is something I think will be an interesting concept, but one I'm not traditionally used to, so I'll have to wait till testing like most things in Alpha 2. Traditionally, dodge roll is tied to a resource, usually stamina, and you manage this resource to attempt to time your dodge rolls and, you know, prevent incoming attacks or preemptively dodge roll to avoid potential damage as the character usually has some sort of iframes or what's better known as invincibility frames, giving you a brief period of evasion where you're almost immortal you know you don't take incoming direct damage during this time there will be true evasion skills and judging from some of the team's dialogue and the recent combat direction i expect there will be a simple iframe mechanic added to dodge roll so like i went through a lot of footage a lot of footage to find every instance of dodge rolling post unreal engine 5's announcement a lot of stuff looked through but i found like literally every moment the developers uh dodge rolled i'll have some of these findings here on screen as of right now dodge appears to only be like a repo 
position tool in a sense. And from what I can tell, the team seems to have like uh, steered from that dodge being tied to an active skill thing they used to talk about for the most part. As it currently stands, there appears to be no resource tied to dodge rolling from what I can tell. And it appears to obviously be a core combat mechanic now, not a active skill per se. I think it's just something you're going to be able to hit a button and you're going to dodge roll. I would personally like to see maybe like a Guild Wars 2 kind of dodge roll management via stamina pool, but we'll delve more into stamina here shortly after discussing active block. Ashes of Creation will feature an active block. This was mostly highlighted in the Cleric Showcase. I didn't see a lot of people talking about this, which prompted this video from me here, where I went into detail on how Ashes has yet to decide on its resource management loop. This isn't a bad thing, as the game is still in progress, of course, and the developers have stated, especially in the Tank Showcase, that we'll likely be testing a system for active block and alpha too. I have my active blocks up. Oh boy. There's a lot. Okay, he doesn't seem to be doing much damage to me, but of course it would normally consume stamina. Is that correct, Trent? Uh, that depends. We're still kind of discussing our resource systems, but you know that is one thing that we could potentially explore. Now we've talked about this in the past, but um, the act of blocking might be an ability that. Uh, it's universal, of course it's universal, but it might be consuming mana, and you'll be able to adjust that mana consumption based off of your passive spec uh, into your skill trees. In addition, it might also consume stamina, where that's something we're going to be testing as part of Alpha 2. Everyone isn't a fan of active block, but I like the idea of it. Some prefer block as a buff or block as a skill, like we see with Aegis buff and Guild Wars 2, which that's a buff that blocks your next incoming attack. I think block is a touchy subject as some people hear active block and then, you know, the first vision that comes to your head is you just kind of imagine a tank holding down one button the entire fight, making it not feel engaging. Then there's some who want the ability to block to mitigate some incoming damage from, let's say, a uh, boss's heavy attack or high damage ultimates from a player in PvP when you just know you're about to get hit hard, you want to be able to just press a button and block. So I can kind of see both sides of that spectrum. I don't think you want a block system like the Elder Scrolls Online where you're just holding block as a tank and it feels almost non-engaging because your positioning just doesn't matter. You can just, you know, kind of taunt all the ads and all the taunts in the Elder Scrolls Online are typically cheap and you just hold block. It don't matter what direction you're facing. You can be blocking hits from behind you, even though your shields, you know, facing the other way, which has just never made sense to me. What I mean by this is, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. And this is something I think New World did a great job with, making your character like block the direction they're facing only in a specific cone, allowing for flanks and making players use their brain in situations with multiple enemies. Like, okay, most of my enemies are in this direction. I can't block everyone. I'm completely surrounded. So I'm gonna, you know, aim my shield this way. And it has PVP applications. No one, no one can really just sit there and hold block and maybe one guy goes to your flank so you can't defend both of them and i think there's a certain skill gap with that you know and it makes tanking a lot more engaging currently as you can tell from all iterations of the fully customizable uis that we've seen there is only a mana pool and a health pool i think a traditional stamina pool for block dodging and sprint could really help balance and you know kind of give you that resource management feel but i personally think just keep it simple. Not that, you know, there shouldn't be innovation or anything, but I think it'll be a lot simpler if we just got like a separate pool for blocking, dodging and stuff like that. But uh, you guys let me know what you think about that below as well. Now let's move on to another basic part of MMO combat, auto attacks. Auto attacks in MMOs are essentially what they sound like. While they may vary from game to game as far as if they're actually automatic or if they're just called light attacks or whatever, these are essentially your non-active skills, not necessarily on a cooldown, and they're typically tied to the weapon you're wielding, right? Now, as I previously mentioned, Ashes of Creation's combat is very similar to Guild Wars 2 from the looks of it, right? However, this is one of the few parts where I feel Ashes of Creation 
is more relative to New World. Ashes has what is referred to as a weapon combo. Basically, weapons in Ashes have an attack string or a series of moves likely tied to your left mouse button by default. And if we look at Guild Wars 2 or ESO, you'll see here that our auto attack essentially stays the same with each cast. You see here that I'm just gonna be swinging this sword. Every time I click my mouse, it's not gonna change. That's what that weapon's auto attack is. However, in New World, you'll notice that weapons have a combo, which is always the same. Each weapon has a variable amount of weapon combo lengths. This can be two pokes from the spear before resetting to the beginning of that combo, or something like Sword and Shield, which has a three hit combo before resetting to that first hit of the combo. Take notice of Ashes of Creation's melee combat showcase featured here with the fighter archetype. I highly, highly recommend watching this showcase because this one and the ranged weapon showcase perhaps best showed what you can expect and it really gave the viewer a feel for the combat and very, very good detail, even without you actually playing. You can see various attack strings with the great sword and the dual wield daggers. Attack strings will also factor your weapon tree chosen if you invested skill points in there, similar to New World as well. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, when wielding sword and shield, like on New World, maybe your third attack in that combo string will have a passive that slows the enemies uh, when it hits them. Maybe the fourth attack in this weapon combo adds a taunt maybe it builds additional threat or maybe the fifth attack in this weapon combo adds a stagger i think you can really play around and get very good with uh weapon procs by investing in that tree and i think that will be very interesting to see ashes of creation will indeed have weapon trees with varying bonuses like this players will eventually learn the synergies between their archetype and the weapon skills in theory. Like if the fourth hit in the great sword combo staggers and you have an archetype skill that knocks back staggered opponents, you will eventually learn the efficient timing to get more bang for your buck by guaranteeing that knockdown after you stagger them with that weapon combo. The balance of weapon passives versus active skills in Ashes of Creation's combat and seeing how much weapon sets affect these weapon procs will be very interesting to see. Before we get into Ashes of Creation's movement while casting in combat and the hybrid combat system, I think there's one more combat skill worth going over, and that's the frequently asked question concerning stuns and status conditions. Our next basic combat information will involve going over stuns and staggers. There will be diminishing returns on stuns so that you can't just be stun locked and that's not really fun for the player. It's never fun literally to just get stunned once and then just never regain control of your character and be able to respond. I think Intrepid did a great job explaining this in the stream that introduced the cleric with the day and night cycle that is. And the team also went over tier one status effects and staggers versus stuns, but I'm gonna not include that clip and not dive into that in this video as this is something I'm pretty sure will be subject to change or perhaps tweak later. I think the main takeaway is that stuns will not be infinitely chained, have diminishing returns, and honestly, like most bosses in you know, every MMOs that we played, uh, bosses in Ashes will typically be immune from being stunned. I think this is something that's really common, something that you expect, right? You don't expect the boss to constantly be getting knocked on the ground. so. I think that's something fair, something that we all expected already. Now, let's talk about perhaps the most important aspect of MMO combat, and that's whether it's tab target combat or action combat. I recently did two polls to gather information just out of curiosity in terms of the MMO community in regards to what combat style was actually preferred these days. Well, here are the first results. This poll right here was conducted on my channel and action combat won by quite a landslide. However, I didn't think too much of it. As most of you who know me for more than Ashes of Creation content know that I've streamed and make content for The Elder Scrolls Online, an action combat MMO. My current MMO to occupy myself in Ashes of Creation's waiting room is another action combat MMO that I currently stream here on the channel, New World. So obviously considering this bias and considering the small sample size of my smaller channel, I ventured into the most stable and safe place on the internet, the MMORPG Reddit. I felt here I would get MMO fans from all over and would be in a neutral territory. My personal prediction was an even split or maybe a 60-40 split with 60% preferring tab target. But to my surprise, action combat actually received more votes, but barely. I would 
think it's fair to say that it was pretty 50-50, right? And I personally prefer action combat, but I can totally get why people prefer tab targeting. I personally am not obnoxious enough to state, oh, MMO should only have this combat, or that style sucks, this will never work, people prefer this, this is outdated, I prefer XYZ, this person prefers XYZ, did it like World of Warcraft did it, do it like new world did it etc etc i just don't think that's a healthy mindset to have uh, and i'm not going to preach to people over what's more fun because at the end of the day that's all up to the player and i just feel like that misses the mark it doesn't actually affect nor factor other people's preferences right this however is where i feel ashes of creation bridges both sides of the tracks ashes of creation is a hybrid combat system that's right this means that it takes the best of each and it puts it together, never leaning too much in one direction, though that's still up for debate. Now, pay attention to the footage in the background, as I feel once again that the melee showcase was the best display of this. The ranged weapon showcase as well, but I feel like the melee combat, it stands out just a little bit better. Action combat lets you free aim abilities, whereas tab target is kind of how it sounds, and you're able to click and lock onto that target. I feel MMO combat can be broken down into extremes. On one end of the extreme, you have WoW or traditional MMOs with normal tab targeting. And then you have the furthest extreme in New World. New World is perhaps the furthest extreme and the biggest definition of an action combat MMO. Then right under New World, you have something like the Elder Scrolls Online, where you kind of just have to aim in that general direction. You don't have to, you kind of have to aim at the target, but the skill will auto lock to that target and track the enemy near the cursor. But right in that sweet middle, that sweet spot, you have Guild Wars 2. Not only because of Guild Wars 2 awesome hybrid combat, which looks very similar to Ash's gameplay, but because you can actually play Guild Wars 2 without the action camera and play with the default tab targeting like traditional MMOs. Now back to Ashes. You can see Steven switches from the action mode style of targeting versus the tab target mode. Switching modes probably isn't the best way to explain what's really being done. And Ashes, this is just a different targeting or input scheme rather than just saying, oh, I'm playing in action mode. You're essentially just choosing your targeting style preference. You can see the cursor under enemies in some interactions and sort of a free aim in others as he moves the character around. You probably saw the recent reveal of MMO Throne and Liberty's horrible static combat in their beta, and I won't curse this video by showing it here, but basically your character cannot move and attack at the same time. A very stagnant combat that just leads you to face tanking enemies in what has been called the worst MMO combat to date and disappointed so many of us. I bring this up because I feel the freedom of movement in combat is very important, and I saw this comment right here on the Ashes of Creations forums. I feel every Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, and feedback should be given on everything Intrepid shows in their open development. I mean, that's the point of their open development, right? To listen to the community feedback. However, to compare Ash's combat to Throne and Liberty was a little hyperbolic. Could AOC be maybe just a little bit more free feeling? I guess, but in my opinion, it's looking pretty fine as is and not rooted. I'd like to see more player agency added to some skills, but to be honest, it looks fine as is, especially when you hear their combat logic and their approach on this matter. Basically, the more powerful an ability, the slower you will be while casting this ability, but it appears you are rarely standing still for most of the skills. I'll play that clip here in full, actually. And then Dale Splite would like to know, can you cast in movement or do you have to stand still? And I saw quite a few people mentioning this. Most abilities you'll find in Ashes of Creation are capable of being cast while, while moving. Um, some of those abilities might slow your movement during the cast, but you can continue to move. Um, very rarely, and depending on obviously the um, uh, 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 the importance of the ability or the power level of that ability, uh, you might be rooted in place. So for example, the AOE ability has a lot going on. It has damage ticking over time. It is an area of effect. It, it also has a status condition application. Um, and in those instances, uh, the, the player character gets rooted. So in short, I think the notion that Ashes has this stagnant rooted combat is quite off. And this wasn't the first time I saw this suggested. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, Ashes of Creation is a PVX game, which means the developers have to account for both PvP and PvE. 
and also have to account for how these things can occur simultaneously. You could be fighting a player and then there's a enemy boss around, enemy NPC ads. This can all occur at once. This is something very interesting, especially when it comes to balancing a skill. Maybe something's overperforming in PvP, but it's balanced in PvE. So you gotta really find that right middle ground. You also have to account for how skills work in that sense. Something like a tank skill that applies a taunt, but maybe you need to find a way to make sure that threat has a viable meaning in PvP, which is something that the developers have previously talked about. This is also tricky when it comes to balancing. With the amount of archetypes and classes and ashes of creation, it's really good that the archetypes kind of deal with a rock, paper, scissors sort of dynamic. This pretty much prevents one class from being a clear meta, a clear strongest class mechanic. For example, maybe the cleric is really strong, but very countered by the mage. Maybe the cleric can heal really good and its self healing is starting to overperform, but the tank class has a defile, if you will, something that really reduces healing for enemies in the area. Maybe the fighter is really strong and really fast, but the ranger outperforms it with being able to attack from range and just having more speed than the other classes. This is how you get that rock, paper, scissors thing, especially when it comes to 1v1 matchups. I think if done correctly, this can be a very, very interesting system. And I don't think it's necessarily going to mean one is just a clear cut winner. So we'll have to see how this rock, paper, scissors kind of concept really plays out come Alpha 2. I cannot wait to see what Ashes of Creation's combat will look or feel like even just six months from now. When you look at Alpha 1 gameplay and you compare it to what we see these days or even back to way back in Alpha 0, it shows that Intrepid listens to feedback and has made progress. I hope to update this video with your feedback as we get more information so be sure to comment any questions you have, things you want to see that you had in other MMOs, key information that I might have missed that you'd like me to include in the next iteration of this video. Was I wrong? on anything is there any vex slander that you have comment all that there's some things i chose not to go over because we don't have much information such as how potions will work what would their cooldown be is there going to be mounted combat and stuff like that stuff that i didn't really want to commentate on even with the information that we do have but um yeah comment below and like the video if you enjoyed this as this took a while to put together please subscribe if you have it so you can sit in ashes of creation's waiting room with me and uh yeah i may start doing some aoc discussion streams in between the new world streams so be sure to come by and say hi once again join us on discord in the pinned comment and thank you to everyone who supported by joining the channel thank you so much peace